Hi, sweet friends. You are so smart for joining me for the after party, the VIP after party where the real fun starts to happen, <laughs> where these amazing, brilliant experts who you've fallen in love with on the podcast have the time and the space to actually teach you more of the how. Now, why isn't everyone doing this is very much about the why. Why isn't the whole world doing these amazing modalities? Now we get to actually dive in and learn a little bit more of the how-to. And today I am so excited because you are going to get to learn from the brilliant, the genius, the veil between the 3D and the 5D, Sarah Jenks, who is an ordained priestess. And today Sarah is going to lead us through a masterclass called What's Next for Me? What's Next for Me? So as you can probably infer from what the title says, if you're in any sort of a question about a chapter change, or if you're looking for clarity on something that you want to manifest, this is going to be a beautiful masterclass for you. So Sarah, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, you're so I welcome. I feel so honored to get to sit in this space with you mm -hmm. and to get to marinate in your magic. And thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Mm -hmm. Well, I love talking about what's next for women because I feel that we can get kind of stuck in patterns and roles and seasons of our life. You know, something that we didn't grow up being educated around were the seasons and the cycles, cycles of the moon, the cycles of the sun, the cycles of our menstrual cycle. And we're actually meant to change all the time as women, you know, because our menstrual cycle is a reflection of the cycles of the moon. And the moon goes through a whole cycle in 29 days. And so, and it changes zodiac sign every two and a half days. It changes phase, you know, every week. And so as women, we're meant to be moving and going through these cycles of really creativity. You know, I always say that the masculine is sort of a sustaining energy. If you think about the sun, the sun sustains us. It basically comes up at the same time every day and basically sets at the same time every day. And you can count on it. The moon, you're like, where is she? Where did she go? She was over here yesterday and now she's gone. And that's what creation needs. And sometimes we need to have these like fallow winter times in order to create something in the spring. Mm. So I'm always trying to get women to be more comfortable with just changing all the time. Mm -hmm. you know, my husband, Jonathan, always says that I'm like the weather in Texas, just like hold on for an hour or two, and then the storm will pass. It'll change. <laughs> yeah. And just to be clear, can people of all genders do this of ritual? Of course, or yes. it's meant for yes. women? Oh, no, of course. Okay, yes. so in your yeah. work, you usually work with I women? I usually work with women in my work. Uh -huh. um, and I find that, but this is really great because men also can be slow as molasses in terms of the changing. And I think it's really good to have a moment to step into the next season of your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, great. So all genders can do this. Yes, absolutely. And asking the question, what's next for me? Yeah. Oh, exciting. Okay. And do we need anything prepared? Do we need to get anything? Yeah. So here are some supplies that I would recommend. You're going to want to have a candle and some matches, some paper, and you can either use like a pot or if you don't have access to a pot, you can actually just use a toilet. We, Great. we will get there. Easy. And then if you have any oracle cards like we have right here, this is um, a lot of Fairchild's Isis deck. This is an amazing deck. You can get them or if you want to do this ceremony a second time, you can get oracle cards for that. And you may also want to have something to create some – to clear the energy. So – there's a few different ways to clear energy. You can use smoke. And I suggest that if you're going to burn something, it's great to burn something that grows on your land. So I grow sacred sage on my land. And so that's what I burn. I'll also, you can burn cedar, you can burn pine, you can burn rosemary. A lot of these, you know, just regular kitchen sage, you can burn thyme. All of these. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. Yes. Oh, that's a great one. All of these plants have clearing properties. If you don't want to burn something, you can just make a bowl of salt water. And I think that is a really powerful tool. So what you want to do first is create sacred space somewhere in your home. And you can do that in your bedroom. You can do that in your bathroom. You can do it in your living room, but someplace where you're not going to be interrupted. If you have kids, you either want to have them out of the house or just tell them that you're going to have some time to yourself in your room and, you know, clean up, 
have it look nice. Maybe you want to bring in some flowers or plants. Oftentimes when I'm doing a ceremony in my room, I'll just grab all the flowers that I have in the kitchen and just bring them upstairs. You know, it doesn't have to be a big ordeal. And first what you want, so first you clean the space and then you want to clean the energy of the space. So that's when you want to burn something that you grew on your property or you can sprinkle salt water all over your space. And then it's great to set up a little altar. Now an altar can just be one candle. It doesn't have to be anything special. If there's a picture of you that you want to put up or a crystal that you may have, um, the a tarot or oracle card deck, you can create a little altar. You can get like a scarf or a bandana or a tablecloth or whatever just to make it really pretty. And you can just do it on the ground. You can do it on a desk depending on where your body is most comfortable sitting. And then I invite you to sit at the altar and just you know, pop on a Ziva meditation and just center yourself, do some breathing and, and just be with your body. In my lineage, we call it empty presence. So what I do is I imagine a root growing out of my body and then I empty out anything that just can go, any fear, any anxiety, any like annoyance, just right through my body. So once you've centered yourself and you've created the space and you've cleared the space, what we're now going to do is we're going to go through this cycle. So the first place that I always like to start in a ceremony is releasing because we have to make space. We have to create compost for what we want to grow in our life. So my invitation would be to take a piece of paper and to write down everything that's not really going great in your life that you want to release. So it can be about releasing. For me, it's usually about patterns. It's like way I'm show- ways I'm showing up in my marriage, ways I'm showing up in motherhood, how I'm showing up in my friendships, like stuff that I see that I'm doing that isn't really helpful. Um, you can do bigger things. Like you want to release maybe a job that you have or um, a, a physical ailment that you have with your body and just write it all down on the piece of paper and fold it up. And what I do is I hold it to my heart and I think of all the lessons that all those things taught me. And I think about all the things that these patterns protected me from and the ways that I was taking care of my body or drinking too much was really because my heart was really hurting or I was feeling really broken. And so I honored those things that I'm releasing instead of being mad at them. And if you're releasing people, thinking about the lessons that they taught you. And so I'm really having a moment of gratitude. And then burn it. You can burn it in the pot. You can burn it over the toilet and then flush it. It's actually a very effective ritual to burn something over the toilet and flush it. And Even if you don't understand what's happening intellectually, when you are consciously releasing something in ceremony and you've cleaned the space and you're really in devotion to your soul, I I don't even, it just works and it's amazing. So I want you to really see that going away. And then I invite you to just close your eyes and lie on the floor and really dream into the life you want to create. I like going five years in the future and I love walking around my dream house and I love seeing what the couch looks like and the pillows and what the clothes are in my closet and really seeing who's there And then as I'm walking around and I'm seeing all the material things, I then want you to notice who are you being in this vision? How are you holding yourself? What is your, what is the state of your nervous system? What is the state of your frequency? What's the pace you're going through your life? How are you dressing yourself? What food is in the refrigerator? How do you feel? Who are you being? And then once you have a pretty clear picture about who you are in that vision, you can open your eyes and write down who is the version of me that has all the things that I want. 
And as you write down that version of you, I want you to start to really know them and feel them in your body because the truth is, is that you are already that person. You just believe that you have to have certain things in order to be the fullest expression of who you are, but it's actually the opposite that you get to step into the fullest expression of you. And then all those material things, the life that you really want is going to come to meet that version of yourself faster than you could possibly imagine. And so after you write it down, what I do is I will often, you know, maybe put some flowers around the piece of paper and I'll leave it on my altar. And then I'll take a moment and I'll just see if I were this person right now, what would I do when I walked downstairs to greet my family or to make myself dinner? What would I do when I wake up tomorrow morning? How would I spend the first hour of my day? How would I show up in the job that I have right now? And as you just imagine yourself doing that, you're going to notice where it feels a little like, uh -uh, like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be nice to my partner. You know, I don't want to have to meditate in the morning for an hour. And that's when we can, you can go back to the releasing, right? And then come back to who you want to be and notice where we attach to being our old selves instead of our new selves. And just keep it on your altar. And I finish every ceremony with the dance party. And so put on a really great song and imagine that you already have all those things and you're dancing in that living room that you saw and you are feeling that energy, that frequency of who the person is that's in that house and really step into that energy and then turn off the song and then just go into your regular life and see if you can hold it. See if you can hold this new version of you, this future version of you that you actually have access to right now. And just notice how people respond to you. I find that when I'm really, when I'm going through these moments, when I'm trying to discover what's next for me, it's always in an energetic shift in my body that I know for me, I can only access if I do a ceremony around it. And then I will come downstairs or my husband will come home from work and he'll just look at me and he'll go, hi, it's nice to meet you. It's really wild and cool. People do notice the difference. And very quickly, you'll start to meet new people. You'll start to get new opportunities and you really will become the next version of you. Wow. I love that so yeah, it's much. It's really fun. I love that so much. Thank it feels you. so simple and profound. And I think for me, the real mark of mastery is the ability to communicate something simply. Mm. And this ceremony is masterful in its simplicity. Thank you. So it's like you're you're clearing the channel, you're opening up mm -hmm. to the infinite possibilities, but then choosing a reality mm -hmm. from the infinite. Yep. And then inhabiting that frequency now because we don't get what we want, we get what we are. That's right. So you're stepping into the frequency of that future version of yeah. you so that you start to attract it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, is there anything, like I think you said people could, if you come up against an edge, like I don't want to meditate or I don't want to be nice to my yeah. partner. Can you say a little bit more about that? Like if, if you come to an edge, like what do we do in that moment? Yeah, I mean, then that's the place to do some work, you know? Mm -hmm. It's maybe doing another ceremony around a pattern, having a really honest conversation with your partner, you know, and just like being uncomfortable mm. because I find that there are two things that hold us back from, from figuring out what's next for us and to really stepping into the next version of who we are, that it's either it totally internalized or there's something that's happening in our lives that we don't like, but we haven't said anything. And so it's anytime you have an edge, ask yourself, am I just uncomfortable? Is it something internally in me? Or is there something in my life that I'm actually not cool with, but I haven't said anything? Mm -hmm. And so that's like when it's just tolerating. good. Silently tolerating. That's when it's just really good to do cleanup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the thing that's coming up right now um, that, you know, my intuition is telling me to say out loud is it's it's rare to be an awakened human on the planet right now. Like most people are asleep to our sacred nature. And so you are going to feel different when you allow your power to sort of come beyond your skin and fill the room with your love and your talents and just like your magic oozing from you, you're going to feel like the odd person out and it's okay. Yeah. And if you turn your lights all the way on, other people can find their own light switch. And I'll, just because it feels uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That feels also like a level of mastery of like, what's the difference between bravely facing some uncomfortability, which might yeah. be a growth edge versus like, oh, I'm violating a boundary or, or not being in integrity with myself. Right. And I think that discernment is really important. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Sarah, thank you so much. I feel excited. So I want to go do that right now. I want to go home and do the ritual. It's so right it's now. really great. And if you you know, if you do it every day, oh. it you will really evolve pretty quickly wow. and see amazing things. And just like keep because our world is not set up to evoke our highest self, that frequency you saw in the vision. So that's your job. You have to create the environment and the container to evoke it. And I also think it's important to set up a home life that supports and evokes your highest frequency. And a lot of us don't have that. Yeah. And so now like when I come home, it's my highest frequency is anchored there. Where it used to be where I come home, I would get to my highest frequency in ceremony or in retreat or in my own sacred start of my own world. But the moment I went downstairs or the moment I saw my husband, it was like toast. So that's when we, that's part of the magic is realizing what circles of our environment are not a match for our highest frequency. So when I started to hold that expanded version of me, I realized, oh, my home life is not a match for who I am. Mm. And so I changed it. And then my career was not a match for who I was. And I changed it. My friendships were not a match for who I was. And I changed it. And so that's how we actually create this amazing life. But what's so cool is that when it shows up, it feels totally normal. Mm. And because we're already on to the next thing, but that's that's just part of the magic. You can be grateful for what you have and be thinking about your next growth edges at the same time. Yeah. The image I just got was that, that you, you can't change everyone else's resonance. And so many of us are trying to change the external circumstances, right? Yeah. Once my husband goes to therapy, once my yeah. kids are older, yeah. once I sell this house, yeah. once I have more money. Yeah. But actually this ritual that you just did, it's like it it allows us to be the tuning fork. It allows us yeah. to be the string on the guitar that gets plucked, that allows all of the external realities to start to vibrate in resonance with that future version of ourselves. Totally. Or this was my experience. You'll realize how much dissonance mm -hmm. is actually, for example, in your relationship. And so what I did was I said very clearly to Jonathan, hey, like we're in dissonance and I want to vibrate at this frequency with my beloved. Do you want the job still? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he was yes. And it took some time, but we had to consciously work at it. My experience was me vibrating at my own frequency did not magically change my partner. Yeah. I had to be very honest about what I needed and deserved. And he really showed up and now he's doing, you know, he leads his own work in his own community, which is so amazing. And, um, so get loud, mm -hmm. you know, get loud. Yeah. Claim, claim your worth, state yeah. your preferences, yeah. get clear yeah. on your dreams. And but I, like I couldn't claim that if I was still in the old frequency. Right. So you do, I you wouldn't did even know what need. to claim. No, because it, it was a match. My, my, bad relationship was a match for how I felt and what I was radiating. Yep. So I had to get it, get it together. And then I realized, oh, this is not a match. Right. And then we could change the external world after my internal world had already shifted. But at that point you had the GPS programmed. You had exactly. the North Star. Yep. You knew where you and were And I heading. had the vision. 
other because than because I was in ceremony. Because otherwise, it's like you're just complaining. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. No, but you're not you gotta going know. To a place. You gotta know where you're going. Mm-hmm. And you've helped me so much with this. So thank oh, you for that. So and I feel like we had a whole another podcast about relationship evolution, setting standards inside of the relationship, being co CEOs. Well, maybe Jonathan in and I can come and <gasps> yes! that'd be really fun. Let's do yeah, it because he's remarkable. You know, he's a surgeon turned you know, sacred rabbi. And he's just like really amazing. Great. It's yeah. a date. It's yeah. a date. All right, sweet friends. I hope that you have fallen in love with Sarah Jenks as much as I have. If you enjoyed this mini masterclass, she has so much more at sarahjenks.com mm-hmm. and also um, on Instagram at Sarah Jenks. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and magic with us. We love you. And if you are enjoying this, please do rate and review the show and share it with your friends. You can tag me at Ziva Meditation at Sarah Jenks, and we will see you next week on why isn't everyone doing this? Goodbye.